Okay, here is some data for the heat of fusion of ice lab. So the first thing you're supposed to do is heat 120 milliliters of water to about 50 degrees. Um, now, this is more than 120. I've got like 150 in here or so. It doesn't really matter um, as long as it's more than 100 because what you want is 100 milliliters of warm water. And so you want to heat more than you need just in case. Also, remember, beakers do not measure volume accurately. So whatever you have here, you have to pour it into a graduated cylinder uh, to actually measure the, uh, the volume accurately. Um, now I've heated it to over 51 degrees, 51.4-ish. Um, I could wait for it to cool down. I could pour a little tap water in here. Maybe I'll do that. Let's do a tiny little bit of tap water. Um, but again, it doesn't really matter. Okay, I'm going to measure 100 mils to put into my reaction vessel. Always check the volume at the same at the right level. Okay, that's good. So this is the first thing I'm recording in the data table is the volume of the warm water, 100 milliliters. Okay. I'm going to want my thermometer in here, but I don't really want to read the temperature yet. I don't want to read the temperature of the warm water right now because I'm gonna walk over to the fridge and get some ice and then I'm gonna walk back and all that time it's gonna be cooling down and releasing some heat. So I'm gonna have more accurate results if I wait until right before we drop the ice in to read the temperature of the warm water. Okay, I'm gonna go get ice. Okay. It doesn't matter what size the ice cube is. Obviously, if I choose a smaller cube, I'll have a smaller temperature difference. Uh, if I choose a larger cube, I'll have a larger temperature difference. It's gonna get even colder, but it's all proportional to the size of the cube. So when I ultimately calculate my heat of fusion of ice, it's joules per gram of ice. So because it's per gram of ice, the math will take care of itself. Okay. So here's an ice cube. I grab it with tongs because my hand is quite warm and that would mess it up. I'm going to stir this and here, right before I drop it in, we'll read the temperature of the warm water. I think it's like 44.8, 44.7 let's say, hopefully that's not backwards. It says 44.7, drop it in, okay. Now obviously, the heat is going from the warm water into the ice. Any heat that comes out, like there's definitely some heat coming off the top, um, is heat lost and that's gonna create some error. Okay, so the temperature is dropping, the ice is melting. It's gonna take a sec, so I'm gonna go put the ice back in the freezer. And this could take a while. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> I say that and then it pauses right at 35. Okay. Oh, you have to stir it every now and then because the thermometer could be sitting in a little localized pocket of hot or cold. We don't know. 32. Okay, 31.4 is the lowest I've seen. 
It is possible that you've seen something I didn't. The cube is just about gone, so that also tells me that, ooh, 31 point one, 31.0, maybe that's the coldest. Ooh, did you see 30.6 for just a sec? Well, the ice cube is gone. I think I saw 30.6 for just a second. So maybe you want to use 30.6 as the coldest or maybe 31.0. It might have been a fluke. It's sitting here for quite a while. Okay. Now, again, different sized ice cubes. So I need to know how big that ice cube was. 30.6. Nope, that's 30.9. Oh, that makes more sense. 30.8, it's still dropping. Thirty point seven. Let's see, I shouldn't have been so hasty. Thirty point seven. think. Okay, there it is for real, 30.6. I think before I was seeing 30.9, but I was reading it reverse and looking at the screen. Okay, so 30.6, I guess. Um, Maybe we were right all along, and we were right for the wrong reasons. <gasps> 30.5. Okay, I'm calling it. I'm calling it 30.5, because the ice is gone. Okay. We need to know how big the ice cube was, so now we're going to measure the volume of this. Now, it's going to be more than 100. Right. I'm going to use this larger graduate cylinder. Okay. Now I wonder if you can read that. On this cylinder, every mark is two milliliters because it's a much larger cylinder. So to me, that's looking like 116. Okay. 116 uh, milliliters. Okay. Now, that is all your data. Um, this video will not tell you how to do the calculations. You'll be working on that um, on your own using our Q equations, um, and that's it. The nice thing about water, I'll say this, the nice thing about water is that the density of water is very, very close to one gram per milliliter. So we're going to be using that, and we're going to be using that assumption, because milliliters cannot go into our heat equations, but grams can. So when we had 100 milliliters of warm water, guess what? we had 100 grams of warm water. And I can tell that 16 milliliters are from the melted ice. So guess what? My ice weighed 16 grams. Okay. Okay.